After three weeks of taking Greg Doucette's HTLT Turk Builder, my body fat is 3.15%. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Fork, and it's been exactly three weeks since I started HTLT Turk Builder from Greg Doucette, and today is gonna to be my three week review. I started on Monday, January the 3rd, and today, filming this video, it is Monday, January the 24th. And I wanna get a few disclaimers out of the way before I actually get on with the actual review. A few things that are going to skew the results is the four months leading up to when I started HTLT Turk Builder, I was really, really slacking on my workouts. And the reason being, I was uploading up to 18 plus videos per week onto YouTube. YouTube. Plus, on top of that, my coaching studio and my physiotherapy clinic was taking up a lot of time, so I really didn't feel like being here too long. So I just tried to get in as quick of a workout as possible, and my volume was really, really low. Whereas over the course of the last three weeks, my volume has substantially increased, specifically with regard to my upper body workout. With regard to my upper body workout, my volume in the four months leading up to 2022 was less than five tons lifted per day during each of those workouts. Whereas over the course of the last three weeks, I've been lifting anywhere from 16 to 24 tons per workout on the upper body. I have been slacking on the lower body. The lower body, I've only been doing about 30% of the workout that I had planned. And same thing with my HIIT workouts. With my HIIT workouts, I've done less than half of the HIIT workouts that I had planned over the last three weeks. But my upper body has been very, very good. So I'm expecting those numbers to go up quite significantly. And with regard to the lower body, the deadlifts, I'm not really expecting too big of a jump because my volume has not really changed too much. But that's the first disclaimer. The second thing that I would like to let you guys know is with regard to body composition, the three weeks leading up to getting onto HTLT Turk Builder, I was eating a lot more. The reason being is I was doing a lot of recipe videos. I ended up filming three months worth of recipe videos in the last three weeks of 2021. And between all of that food, plus all of the great food around the holidays, I was just eating a lot. So I ended up putting on 10 pounds in the last three weeks of 2021. And of that 10 pounds, eight pounds of that was fat. So I'm expecting my body composition to change. And a lot of that change is going to be due to me going back to my normal diet or at least somewhat normal and that's pretty much it in terms of those couple of disclaimers and then a couple other things that I would like to let you guys know is that I am not being paid for this review everything that I say is my own opinion and it is completely unbiased I'm not being paid to say anything nobody told me to say this stuff whatever I say it is just my own words and that's pretty much it now I want to get into the actual review of the actual supplements but first real quick like the video and comment down in the comment section as it would really help me out and help out with the algorithm and if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the content and now I'm going to get on with the review. The first thing that I would like to touch on is the side effects. Some possible side effects for me personally, I noticed that I was getting a lot of loose stool when I started the HTLT Turk Builder. I started it on Monday, January the 3rd, and I was taking six capsules per day. Originally, my plan was to start at two and then titrate up to six, depending on how exactly I felt. But I decided, you know what? I wanna go at the highest dose possible to see what is the maximum benefit I can see from this. So I started with six right off the bat. And on the Tuesday, I ended up getting some loose stool and it progressed for about 10 days. On the Friday was the absolute worst and then it started to get a little bit better. And over the course of the three weeks, it's kind of gone up and down, but overall I have been experiencing a lot of loose stool and I believe it is due to the HTL Turk Builder. However, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis back in 2010. So if you don't have a digestive disease, then you may not experience any type of loose stool from taking the supplement. However, if you do have some type of autoimmune disease that happens to affect the GI tract or your digestion, something like celiac disease, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, then you may experience some loose stool and it may be something worth noting for you in the future and then another thing worth noting with regard to the side effects is the hunger now I don't want to attribute the hunger directly to the Turk Builder because as I stated, the last three weeks of 2021, I was consuming a lot more food than usual because of all the recipe videos and all of the great food that was around the holidays. A lot of goat, seafood, all that type of great food. So I don't know if the excess hunger is because of the Turk Builder itself or because I was eating so much in the three weeks prior to starting Turk Builder that it just took a little bit of time for me to get back into my eating schedule because over the course of the last three weeks, the first two weeks, my diet wasn't really on point. I was still eating quite a bit and over the course of the last week my hunger, hunger has been starting to get back to normal and I haven't been eating quite as much I'm back to my normal eating schedule almost so those are the couple disclaimers worth noting and now I want to get on with the actual metrics first thing I want to touch on is the actual weight 
When I weighed myself three weeks ago, I did two weigh-ins. I did one first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, and then I did one just before I actually did all of my performance lifts. With regard to my morning weight, originally it was 159.8 first thing in the morning and 157.8 at the end of the day. And with regard to my weight this morning, first thing in the morning it was 158.8, and then just when I weighed myself a couple minutes ago, it was 157.6. So my weight hasn't really changed too much. It ended up going down by one pound exactly first thing in the morning and only by 0.2 pounds just a couple of minutes ago. And now we're gonna get into the circumferential measurements. For the circumferential measurements, last time I ended up doing the biceps, the chest, the waist, the hips, and the mid thigh. The biceps were 14 and three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna be taking my measuring tape right now and we're gonna be measuring it again and see if anything has changed. So let's see if it's more than 14 and three quarters of an inch. Okay, and the bicep measurement came in and it is 14 and five eighths of an inch. So it went down one eighth of an inch on the bicep. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the chest. The chest last month when I measured it, or three weeks ago when I measured it, it was 42 and one quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and see if there's been any change on that one. And from 42 and a quarter, it is exactly 42 on the nose. So that one went down one quarter of an inch. Next, we're gonna do the waist. The waist was 32 and one half. So let's see if there's been any changes on the waist. The waist is 32 and a half, so that one stayed exactly the same. Next, we're gonna do the hips. For the hips, I'm gonna measure at the greater trochanter. One thing worth noting was I measured at the umbilicus for the, for the waist, but let's go ahead and measure the hips. The hips, last time when I measured it, they were just under 36 inches, so let's see what they are right now. And from just under 36 to 36 and a half. And then the last one, we are gonna measure the mid-thigh. Mid-thigh, when I measured it the last time, it was 21 and one quarter of an inch, so let's see how that one has changed. And the mid-thigh went from 21 one and a quarter to 21 and five eighths. So it went up three eighths of an inch. And that's it in terms of the circumferential measurements. Next, I'm gonna be measuring skin folds to get my body fat assessment. With regard to the skin fold caliper method that I'm gonna be using, it is going to be the Jackson Pollock three site skin fold method. And this is one of the least accurate methods possible for measuring. The only reason I'm using it is because it's only three sites, the pec, the umbilicus, and the thigh, and they're all readily accessible to me. If you wanna know why exactly this is the least accurate method, you can check out this video over here that I made a couple years ago. But I'm gonna go ahead. The three things were gonna be the chest. The last time that I measured the pec, it was at 4.3 millimeters, so let's see where it is right now. I got my handy Harpenden skin fold calipers right over here, and I'm not a lefty, but I'm gonna do my best to take the measurements. What I wanna do is I'm gonna go two fingertips from the nipple line, that is where I wanna place the calipers, and then I'm just gonna grab a nice fold right up top and then take the reading. 4.3, just like the first time. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the umbilicus. The umbilicus, the last time that I did it was 6.5 millimeters, so let's see what happened with this one. Gonna put the center of the calipers right in the umbilicus, and then wherever the edge is, that's where I'm gonna measure. Go, go ahead, take a nice grip of skin. 6.5 millimeters, so that one did not change whatsoever. And then the last one is going to be the mid-thigh. Mid-thigh, the last time that I measured it, it was 5.0 millimeters of fat. So let's go ahead, and we're gonna just go ahead and sit down. And we're gonna see what exactly happened. And five millimeters, which means that one is also exactly the same. So overall, the body fat did not change whatsoever. And my weight does not really come into play when we are using the Jackson Pollock, which is one of the reasons why it's one of the most terrible methods. So because all of those numbers are exactly the same, that means that after three weeks of taking Greg Doucette's HTLT Turk Builder, my body fat is 3.15%, exactly the same as it was three weeks ago. But again, this is one of the worst caliper methods possible. Really, I'm probably closer to 12 to 14%, somewhere in that range right now. But now that we got all that out of the way, next we're gonna go ahead and do our performance metrics. With regard to the performance metrics, again, I'm gonna be doing the deadlift, the V-bar dips, and the wide parallel grip pull-ups. And once again, because I've been doing a lot more volume over the course of the last three weeks, I'm expecting my numbers to go up, but not because of the Turk Builder, but because of the extra volume that I've been doing over the course of the last three weeks, especially with regard to the upper body lifts. The V-bar dips and the pull-ups, I'm expecting to go up roughly 20-ish percent on each of those lifts. So for the V-bar dips, I ended up doing 41 
repetitions the last time and I did it at a 60 beat per minute tempo and whenever I was no longer able to maintain that tempo, even if I could continue to do more, I automatically stopped. So from 41, I'm expecting to get anywhere from 45 to 50. If I'm able to get 50 or more, then I'm gonna know that it was the Turk Builder and not just my hard work that ended up getting those extra repetitions. With regard to the wide parallel grip pull-ups, I ended up getting 32 three weeks ago and I'm expecting to get anywhere from 35 to 40. If I get 40 or more, I'm gonna know it was the Turk Builder and not just my hard work. And with regard to the deadlifts, the deadlifts, I didn't really do too much load or too much volume with regard to my lower body. I've really been slacking on my lower body workouts the last three weeks. I did five out of the six workouts and of those five workouts that I did complete, I never did more than 30% of the workout that I had planned for that day. So I did 33 repetitions of 225 with the deadlift and that was three weeks ago. I'm expecting to get somewhere in the 35 maybe 40 range. If I get more than 35, it may be attributed to the Turk Builder, but if I can hit 40 repetitions, then 100%, it is going to be due to the Turk Builder and not just my hard work. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for in those with regard to those performance metrics. And then I ended up doing the Rogue Echo Bike 50 Cal Challenge, and I uploaded that a couple days ago. I include a link right up over here if you guys haven't seen that video. But in that video, I was expecting to get under 230, and I got two minutes and 22 seconds. So did the Turk Builder work? It may have. It may have helped me get an extra two or three seconds quicker on the Rogue Echo Bike 50 Cal Challenge. And that two to three seconds would have equated to roughly 1.4 to 2% increase in performance. So if a 1.4 to 2% increase in performance can justify the cost of taking Turk Builder, then it may be something that you would want to take. But again, that's not 100% that it increased it by two to three. That's just my educated guess based off of knowing my body and knowing what exactly I could do. But now that we got all out of the way, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to test my deadlift, my V-bar dips, and my wide parallel grip pull-ups. So let's see what I can do. All right, so I've got my metronome set to 40 beats per minute. I'm gonna see how many I can get done while maintaining that tempo. Let's see if I can get to 40 repetitions. All right, 36. And I've got my metronome set to 60 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and see if I can get to 55 repetitions. And I've got my metronome going at 60 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and see if I can get at least 40.
36. All right, so now that we got all of the metrics out of the way, I'm gonna just do a quick recap, but my weight hasn't really changed too much. It's been one pound less first thing in the morning, 0.2 pounds less just now than it was three weeks ago. So really not too much of a change over there. With regard to my measurements, in terms of the circumferential measurements, there wasn't a whole lot of change. Most of the numbers either went plus or minus half an inch of where exactly they were before. So there wasn't really any change over there. With regard to the skin fold measurements, they were absolutely identical to where they were three weeks ago. According to the Jackson Pollock three site method, I was 3.15% body fat, which is actually about 4, 12 to 14%. And then with regard to my performance metrics, all of my numbers did go up and I did make improvements. However, they didn't go up enough to, for me to say that it was the Turk Builder. All of these numbers, I would have expected to get those without taking anything whatsoever. So it's only been three weeks. I'm gonna do it for another three weeks and I'm not gonna give my final verdict until then. But right now, it is, doesn't really look like it did too much for me personally. You may have a different experience for you. If you decide to take it, you might get terrific results. You may not get any results whatsoever. So just because it didn't work for me so far, it doesn't mean that it won't work for you. But I'm gonna hold my final verdict until three weeks from now. In three weeks, which I believe it's gonna be February the 14th, I'm gonna be doing my final measurements and my final performance metrics, and then I'm gonna give my final verdict. But that's pretty much it for today's video. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and ask your questions down in the comment section so I could help you guys out. But that's pretty much it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to keep making these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so I'm gonna be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you again tomorrow.